In this short video, I'm going to talk about the graphs of inverse proportion. And we'll look at P is inversely proportional to 1 over Q. So um, I've got my axis already drawn. We're only going to look at the positive side because that ten tends to be what we do. So let's say P is equal to, remember, we always write P is equal to something, K, but in this case it would be divided by Q. So this is what the formula for these two variables is going to look like. Now, I'm just going to make this up. I'm just going to, for, for argument's sake, I'm just going to make k equal to 1. Because um, it'd just be easier to do that. But you can apply this to any question. So I want to look at what the graph of p is equal to 1 over q looks like. Just, just this here. And all the kind of inverse proportion graphs would look sort of similar to this in some ways. Now, if I just kind of make a, a table of this, um, let's have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, and up to kind of like 1. And here we'll have like maybe something like... Okay, let's, have, let's just work these ones out. So let's say Q is... 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then dot, 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 and then 1. So going up by 0 0.1, let's work out what P is. So P would be 1 divided by all of these. So 1 divided by 0 0.1 is 10. And then uh, 1 divided by 0 0.2 is 5. And then 1 divided by 0 0.3 is going to be... 3.3 recurring and so on and then 0.4 which is that 0.4 is 2.5 and so on and then 1 divided by 1 would be 1. Now the reason why I haven't got 0 for Q because of this if you do 1 divided by 0 you're going to get a maths error on your calculator and it's because you can't divide by 0. Now but that doesn't mean you can get, that doesn't mean you can sort of like, you can get very close to zero, you just can't divide by zero. So 0 0.1 was 10, let's put 10 up there. 0 0.2 was 5, halfway down. 0 0.3 was 3.3, .3. then it was 2.5. I'm sort of making this up. Uh, and let's say 1's over here. Okay, this is what the graph would look like. It's what we call a reciprocal function. But because you can't divide by zero, the closer you get to zero, the higher it becomes. So, for example, if I did 1 divided by 0 0.000001, so if I made Q 0 0.001, so which is like, like almost there, 1 divided by that would equal, well, it'd equal a really big number, wouldn't it? It equal um, 1 followed by, how many zeros is that? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Yeah. Um, so that's what the number would be, which would be way, way up there. So you can see this kind of like inverse proportion thing happening. The smaller Q gets, so the smaller Q is, the larger p is because it's one divided by q but on the flip side if you make q a very big number so if you make it something like 10,000 um getting all the zeros wrong today on i <laughs> keep adding extra zeros what's going on 10,000 yeah then 1 divided by 10,000 is a very small number so you can see that the larger q is the smallest p, p is getting so this is what the graph would look like so inverse proportion, the graphs kind of look like this. They kind of look something like that. They'll never quite touch this axis and they'll never quite touch it here. They'll get really close, but they'll never quite touch it because the larger Q gets, one divided by that gets really, really small, but it'll never quite equal zero. And the smaller Q gets, the larger P becomes, but you can never divide by zero, So, you, you, but you can get really, really close to it. This is what we call a reciprocal function. So to summarize so any kind of inverse proportions 1 over q 
or 1 over q squared or 1 over q cubed would look something like that. Okay, it could be kind of like up there or kind of like, but it looks something like that. Now, I want to summarize kind of like direct and inverse proportion into one thing now. Okay, so, so just to kind of summarize the whole thing. All right, direct proportion, inverse. So, P directly proportional to Q means the formula would look like P like this, P equals something times Q. P directly proportional to Q squared means P equals Q, K times Q squared. Directly, oops. Directly proportional to cubed is going to be K times Q cubed or the square root of Q would be P is equal to K times square root of Q. Inversely proportional to P is equal to, sorry, P is inversely proportional. I keep getting this wrong today. Oops. So that means the formula is going to look like this, K over Q. So if it was inversely proportional to 1 over Q squared, that's going to be K over Q squared. And if it was inversely proportional to 1 over Q cubed, that's K over Q cubed. If it's 1 over square root of Q, that means it's 1 over K over square root of Q. So, so this is the description, and this is what the formula is going to look like. Description, formula, description, formula. Then you have to work out what K is. In each one and they need to give you some numbers in order to do that okay thank you for watching all 30 free videos i know it's been quite long and i hope you do well on the questions related to this if you get stuck do email me it's a bit tricky and i'll try and kind of upload some of the things if i can okay thank you for watching